this uh, scout team quarterback you guys have? Is he giving your defense a good luck? Yeah, <laughs> he does. He's he's uh, he's been professional about it too. So um, the way they've been working him in and uh, giving him his opportunities, I mean, I I really don't pay too much attention to what the offense is doing, but you. Um, but he's been working in scout team for sure. With, with Solomon working his way back in, way back in, if and when he does come back, I mean, you're going to have a rookie at every level of the defense. Do you, do you have a philosophy as a coach as to just how you incorporate them into these starting roles, particularly late in the season, they'll be playing a longer season than they have before? You... Um, you can never be afraid to play a young guy. Ever, ever be afraid to play a young guy. There's, will you have lumps with them learning, learning the way? Uh, I do believe so. But um, for us and, and, and the way we operate, uh, you know, the, the veteran has the ability to recognize and diagnose and play a little bit, uh, play much smarter, a much smarter brand of football. And because of it, they can play with a little bit of speed because they can anticipate uh, what's happening to them. A young guy might not be as on it, but he can make up for that lack of knowledge with speed. So how can you get that young guy to play like a veteran? He has to play. And the more they play, the more the quicker the quicker as a staff we can get those guys to play like veterans while they're youthful. And with all that speed and juice that they just got out of college, that's how you get those fast, explosive defenses that you've seen in the scheme. What would you see from Adrian early on to – I know you got – a necessity at safety, but to, to switch him from cornerback, what what did you like about his skill set there? He's got he's got great range uh, in the middle of the field. He's got what I'll call a professional. He's a professional safety. He's a professional football player in that he can go red line to red line uh, and cover. You saw the goal ball that they had um, uh, to our defensive right. That I mean, he was on the other hash and tracked all that, took up all that space, which is really really cool for a rookie to be able to do that. And it just shows that he is an NFL caliber safety. Uh, his tracking angles in space, uh, when that ball does reach that second level, we'll call him the eraser to erase all the issues that might happen in the run game. He has the ability to track in space, which makes him a really good special teams player. Um, so now the last part that we're trying to get to is mental. Uh, if he can get to that mental speed, we feel like he might be able to be a, a, a pretty good safety, but that's, that's the last part of it. A, a guy being drafted in the seventh round, it, it sounds like you're talking about qualities that you know, if th those are recognized in college, that maybe he would be picked higher. Were were those qualities that you learned when you when you got him in the building, as opposed to scouting him in college? Um, he, the the speed, we we knew the speed, we knew the physicality, um, uh, we knew that he he was a really good tackler and all that stuff, and and so we did have him at corner initially, uh, just because of the the way the roster had panned out when we when we had first gotten him. So when he had his opportunity to go play safety, we we were able to see some of the things that he was able to do, some of the things that we like out of a free safety. And so uh, leaving him in that spot and giving him a chance to go play, it's, uh, it's kind of, I guess you could say, it evolved. He seems to have a, a bit of a, a chip on his shoulder. Is that something that he's shown you know, since he got here? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's relentless in his uh, work ethic and his preparation. And um, I love the way he hits. Uh, he's a very physical football player. And it's very important to him. Um, is, uh, I don't know if it's a chip as much as it, as it is important where every play is very, uh, every rep, every play, every meeting, it's very, very important. He's very into it, and he has some to prove uh, for sure. You mentioned he's a physical football player. The you know, last two guys at the time, you say, both broke their forearms on the pitch and type of hit. I mean, is there anything wrong with the way they, they came into those hits? I mean, can you coach around what happened? Uh, I, I still think they're freak accidents. You know, we teach. Um, head out of the game, leverage side, shoulder tackling. Um, uh, if you watch real closely what happened to Tart, he, um, he was coming in for that tackle and he had a shin to a forearm. And it's, I, I, I'm guessing the impact of, the, of the, uh, the impact is what caused the break. But they're freak accidents when you get, when you get something like that. Uh, so there's, uh, I, I don't know if there's anything teaching. You know, uh, we, we once had a free safety a while back ago. We teach getting the ball out, and he went for a rip attempt, and he broke his he broke his wrist. Malcolm Smith tore his pec on a rip attempt. Something that you it's just fundamental teaching. So you uh, they're freak accidents, and, and you wish they don't happen, but uh, it did. And with with Tart, you, you didn't obviously didn't get the sample size that you wanted for the season, but you got to see him at both 
safety spots. Moving forward, can you evaluate maybe where you think he fits better or where you would like to see him long term? You know, I, I think Tart's good at both. I really do. I know it's a, not the answer you're looking for, but uh, he's, he is. He's got, he's got great instincts in the back end he's, uh, to play uh, the, middle, the middle of the field. He takes great angles. He's very physical back there, and he's got great range. Uh, in the box, he's really good. He's a very physical football player. He's a hell of a man-to-man -man matchup uh, on tight ends. Uh, you feel very comfortable uh, against any tight end in the league with him. And uh, he's a physical tackler. So, and he's smart. He is. He's very smart. So you're. Uh, he's. He's. He's a luxury in the sense that you don't have to uh, pigeonhole him, so to speak. He can. He can do both, and you can just continue to work at adding people and knowing that he can be a plug-and-play type player for sure. Officers game. Uh, Ruben, Ruben did well. He had, you know, like all rookies, he, there's a couple of things that I'm sure that he wishes he had back, but he, sh he showcased the playmaking ability that we all recognize in college. He's, he played fast. He was physical. He had a couple of really great tackles out in the open field on AP, uh, some great tracking angles, did a great job communicating with uh, Eric Reed and uh, uh, Brock in the box. Um, so he showed a lot of his skill set, and uh, for him to get through the game was, was awesome. I know the... He's always going to have the little flare up on that uh, 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 ankle, the high ankle sprain, uh, just uh, natural with a high ankle sprain. But for him to come back in the game and play the way he did, excited for him moving forward to see if we can continue to grow from it. I have a couple of questions, basic questions about uh, DeForest Buckner. Please mm -hmm. bear with me. Yeah. He's recognized as one of the best interior defensive linemen in the league. How would you describe his job in the defense and what is he good at? So he's a, uh, obviously he's a three technique. Uh, first and foremost, he's a uh, dominant three technique in the, in the run game. That's his first job, is to make sure that he gets great penetration, sets edges, and, uh, and just wreaks havoc in the backfield as much as possible. And then obviously in the pass game, same thing from a three technique spot, to be able to win one-on-ones and get to the quarterback. Um, he's done an unbelievable job at doing exactly what we ask him to do. Uh, there is an art to being able to penetrate and maintain your gap, and he's and I believe that he's mastered that. He can penetrate and create knockback, still maintaining his gap, and he wins constantly. He constantly wins one on ones. His sack total is not where it wants to be, and teams are sliding protections towards him, uh, taking completely eliminating him from the game. And now, as a D line, we all got to step up, all of us. Uh, and if you get a one on one, you have to win. Otherwise, teams will find a way to continue to neutralize him. In the past game, and that's the uh, that's the stuff that we're trying to to work through to see if we can find more opportunities for him to get one on ones. Because when he is one on one, he's winning, and that's why his pressure rate so high. Because uh, even when they slide to him, he's still finishing the down off of blocks, and that's what makes him unique. That's what makes him special. What are the uh, what are the tendencies? Best way to beat Eli Manning? Eli, um, God, he's still a Hall of Fame quarterback. You know, he's uh, he's. Um, uh, I don't understand the New York media, no disrespect, but they, <laughs> God, uh, <laughs> he's good, man. I mean, he's, he, he can make every throw. He's, he's accurate. He's, uh, uh, he stands in there and uh, will take a beating and, and still get up and still make unbelievable throws. So to, to get after, to, for Eli, like every quarterback, you, you got to make him uncomfortable. And, uh, and that's a challenge for us up front is to find a way to make him uncomfortable like it is every week. Every week it is, so. What, to what's the thing? Go ahead. To fall back on, on DeForest, what, what's his next step in his evolution? I know you talked about getting a one-on-one matchup, making sure you have that, but for him as a player and skills. The one thing that I would encourage, and it's, uh, it's something we're still trying to work on, is for him to find that, that extra step, that one more step, because when he does win, we saw it. Uh, he had a, a hit on the quarterback that I think probably would have been a sack fumble, uh, the one with uh, Dante. We ended up getting a, a PI. On the, or a holding penalty, so it negated it. But when you look at it, it looked like it was going to be a sack fumble. So that step that we're working on, bending the corner to be able to, when he does win, that it's at half a step. That's what makes players elite. A lot of players can win. Not very many can win at the rate he does. The elite ones have that uh, two-yard burst to the quarterback uh, to, to create that sack production, uh, for, lack of, for lack of a better word. But... That would be the one thing if there's something that he needs to improve in his game. And the one thing that we're continuing with him is to find that extra step, find that extra bend, find that extra, uh, find the lean that when he does win, uh, to be able to get the hit on the quarterback and bring him down with the ball 
what's that? How do you find that extra step? Uh, Scanina does a great job drilling it. So you got, uh, there's a bunch of different drills to help him with his lean, his pad level, uh, helping him uh, uh, stay low to the ground where when he does win to be able to, uh, instead of having a long uh, hoop to run, it's a tighter hoop. And so those things, you just continue to drill it and drill it and drill it. And um, uh, and that's that's the best you can do with it for sure. Well, you guys struggled a little bit in the run game as of the last few games. Um, and early in the year, when Tank Carradine was playing, he looked like he didn't miss any assignments, played sound football, really set the edge. You talk about being a dominant edge sitter. He was a dominant, dominant edge sitter in the run game. How much of a lift is having him back in the fold? It'll be a great lift, uh, getting him back, because I, I do think he is a, a very dominant football player. I will challenge you on the run game part, though. Um, uh, you know, we are only giving up 3.9 a carry, and any time you can give up less than four yards a carry in the, in the run game is pretty good. Uh, Shoot, when you get 35 carries thrown on you, I'd like to think I could run 400, but <laughs> you're going to have a lot of yards run on you. And it's uh, uh, so from an efficiency standpoint, when we look at an efficiency from efficiency uh, in the run game, we feel like we've been uh, much improved and we are performing in the run game much better. The yards don't show it, but from an efficiency standpoint, when you break down play to play, it's, it's much improved and it can get a lot better. And with a guy like Tank, it'll improve. Uh, this was a couple uh, weeks ago, but uh, was Ward's injury also a kind of a freak thing? It was. Uh, again, it came on a tackle, and for him, uh, I, I couldn't exactly see how it uh, broke in the pile, but uh, any time you break something, I, I think they're, especially in this league, I think it's kind of a freak accident, in my opinion, because the way you get rolled up on, they're so, these players are so strong. If you To break something, it, something goofy has to happen. And to, to, to follow up on that, and, and with Adrian, you've got at that free safety position now, those are two guys with a lot of cornerback uh, experience in the past. Is there anything in particular that that may have a, a, a cornerback might bring to that spot that, that you might like that translates into something positive? Uh, good foot speed. Uh, they uh, usually a, uh, uh, you know, the corners, what they add to it, I guess, would be more speed. You'd, uh, you'd love to say that they have a little more instincts and all that, but really uh, when it comes to, to the back end play, just being able to read the quarterback and all that, uh, from our system, I'm, I don't know how much that would really translate, to be honest with you, uh, from corner to safety, except for the, the range and the speed. Why move Ruben to Will in base downs? For, uh, the, for the defense overall in general, uh, like we've talked about before, we, we think Brock Coyle is one of the better communicators on this on this defense, being able to get the close call and all that. And when you have a, a guy who can command the huddle, uh, set the close call, make all the checks, that puts 10 other people at ease. Uh, not to say Ruben can't do it because he does, he'll do a, he does a great job with it, but having him and Ruben on the field at the same time, being able to talk to the people around them and also allowing Ruben to just focus on being a football player uh, uh, was, was was the main deciding factor. So did Coyle gets the green dot then? Yeah. So when Ruben's in the game and sub, do you, you have to use? We signal? have to signal. Okay. Yeah. Is that slow use? Is that problematic in any way? Can that slow you down? No, no, not if because uh, um, we have uh, Eric also in there, and so there's there's a bunch of they know when Dime comes in, everyone's looking to me to the sideline, so to to make sure that communication goes as smooth as possible. Would you, have more? Would you like to get Ruben to a point where he can have the green dot? Is yeah, I mean, it's uh, still it's still the belief of the organization and, and myself, too, that he's going to be our future Mike. Um, and he's he has no issue communicating. He has no issue making calls. It was just how can we get uh, uh, a bunch of people able to communicate and give him to take a load off. He's a rookie. He has, he's been hurt, and he's got a lot of stuff going on in his world. Uh, just to let them just go line up and play football, and that was that was really the major uh, main deciding factor. Witherspoon gave up two n notable plays, but how did he play overall Sunday? He played well. Uh, one thing I'm really pumped up about Akello, um the big knock on him was not his coverage ability. The big knock on him was not his footwork and all that stuff. It was his ability to tackle and play physical. And there's a play uh, they ran power right at Akello and AP tried to bounce it and he just he hit the daylights out of him and flipped AP head uh, head first um, and so his ability in the run game crack replaces physicality and the way he's been playing that stuff now he still can go further but that is a non-issue and so we feel like 
we always felt like if he showed physicality in college, he was a first or second round talent. He's showing it now, and along with all that footwork and all that, um, the two plays he gave up were great learning lessons for him from just a football awareness uh, standpoint. Uh, one that he recognized uh, right away. Uh, so just that's the part I'm most pumped about is the physicality he's been showing. Was that specific play uh, the best example of him showing better physicality? Oh yeah, yeah for sure. That's I, I was going to be on teach tape for a long time on cracker plays. <laughs> They get uh, a nice rise uh, from teammates in the uh, it, it got a rise from the guys on the field, and when it actually happened, E. Reed was pumped up for him. I mean, he he hit the heck out of him. Now you got to go look at it. It happened, and uh, we we're in the red zone at that point. Uh, just pull it up if you guys want to go watch it again. It's it was a pretty cool play. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you all.